Hey Virgo, this is Raina from Divination by Raina Moon, and I welcome you to your June 2015 astrological forecast. So the month begins with a full moon in the sign of Sagittarius at 11 degrees, and this is going to happen on June 2nd at 11.19 a.m. Central Standard Time. This full moon is falling in your fourth house of home and family. So expect some matter in this area to either be illuminated or come to fruition or conclusion. I just want to make a brief comment about full moons and remind people that it's not always about endings. Sometimes astrologers tend to generalize and say, oh, something's going to end in that area of your life, when in fact it could be something blossoming, you know, becoming fuller, just like the moon. And even when endings do occur, it's often for the best. And we can't always say that endings are bad and beginnings are good. Sometimes you can begin something that's terrible, and you can end something that's a relief to end. So if you have inheritance issues that have been hanging in the air, or any kind of matter that's related to your living situation, maybe you were trying to get a new house somewhere, and this is a time when you hear from the real estate agent and they say, yeah, you've got it. So that's exciting. And then on the 5th, Venus is going into Leo and that will be in your 12th house. It's going to join Jupiter there and there's going to be a lot of blessings from the universe it's in the most mysterious house of the Zodiac. A house where you may not even be aware of a lot of the things that are going on because they're beneath the surface. I think this could be a time when if you are single, you can meet the person that is your soulmate or twin flame. Now how cool is that? Because Venus is a sign of love relationships and the 12th house can relate to past lives. So your soulmate, your twin flame, even if you're married, even if you're in a committed partnership, you might meet the person that you're really meant to be with. And with Jupiter there, it's going to be a lucky thing. It's not going to be something that's disruptive, full of a lot of drama, or anything like that. You could also meet a spiritual master, if you haven't already, just by having Jupiter there, because Jupiter rules the sign of Sagittarius, which is the sign of the sage or guru. And so you may have found during this Jupiter transit that your spiritual life has really, you know, upped its game. And these planets being in the 12th really are kind of on the threshold for ushering in a new phase of your life because once Jupiter goes into the first house, which will happen in August, you will start a 12-year cycle with Jupiter, and that's extremely exciting. So let's talk for a minute about the Mercury retrograde. You're ruled by Mercury, and it's been in retrograde in your 10th house, and it goes direct on June 11th. This will help clear up any kind of, you know, misconnections or miscommunications that are related to your career aspirations, or if you're already on the job and you've been experiencing haywire situations. This should at least steady things a little bit. And you also have the sun in this 10th house until the summer solstice on June 21st when the sun goes into the sign of cancer and then 
it will be in your 11th house. So while the sun is in the 10th house with this Mercury there, you may be doing a lot of, you know, thinking over your career. Am I really doing what I want to do? And once the sun transits into the 11th house of hopes and wishes, this is really a time to, you know, kind of grab the brass ring in terms of what you want as your passions in life and try to meld what you're doing for a living with what you love to do. Because on the 16th of June, you're going to get a new moon in your 10th house at 25 degrees Gemini. And this is going to be a new chapter for your career. And if you don't like what you're currently doing, you can use this time to set intentions in this area and really take those baby steps into maybe making your hobbies into a career and that's something that's ruled by like the fifth house because the fifth house deals with creative pursuits hobbies and things of that nature and you have Capricorn in that house which happens to be in the sign of Pluto, really doing a roto-rooting job through your fifth house. So anything related to your children or your hobbies is being kind of purified and whittled down. And this is a great energy to use that sun in the 11th house at the end of the month to really contemplate what kind of things you can do that bring you joy rather than just going through the motions of having a job and going to work every day. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Neptune because Neptune is going retrograde itself on June 12th. And this is in the sign of Pisces, which it's been in for several years. And this is in your seventh house. So, Virgo, I don't know if this is true for you. But you know, but you know that Pisces is your opposite sign. And so this may mean that, you know, affecting the seventh house. With Neptune in the seventh house, if you're somebody who's single, you may have felt like, it's really hard to find a partner who is not shady, who is really representing himself or herself as they are. And if you're in a committed relationship, you may have problems with deception from a partner. Remember, this is an opposition, so there's a lot of conflict going on between your first house of self and this seventh house of the other person and the relationship. And so with Neptune there, there has been a lot of confusion with this house. And when Neptune goes retrograde, it's actually a good thing because what happens is, is the veil gets lifted and you see things for what they are. And you might realize, hey, this ain't happening. I'm going to have to make some changes here. And, you know, it's all good because when you make changes for the better, even though it might be painful at first, ultimately it is a good idea. I recommended a book for Geminis called Codependent No More by Melody Beatty, and I recommend it for you too because, Virgo, you are really a sign that likes to help. And... Sometimes when people are like this, they attract <laughs> helpless people who need help. So this kind of Neptune in retrograde energy might make you aware of this type of relationship. If you're giving more than the other person on a consistent basis 
and you're enabling them in some way. Or it could reveal that you really do love someone. You weren't sure, and now you realize you do love that person. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a negative situation where you want to get rid of a partner. It could be that you were on the fence about something, and now you realize how valuable that person is in your life. Now Saturn has been in your fourth house, just the first few degrees. So it's been kind of like dipping its foot into the fourth house and at, in the sign of Sagittarius. And now it's retrograding and on the 14th it will officially dip back into Scorpio in your third house of communication. And this may affect people in different ways. If you have had any kind of sibling issues that need to be kind of dealt with again, even if you don't initiate contact, you may find that your siblings come into your life regardless. And this may actually coincide with that full moon situation because, as I said, that's taking place in the fourth house of family and then some issue that's connected to that fourth house. And I mentioned like inheritances, but it might be some other issue. Maybe it's just taking care of a parent or something and who's going to do it and coordination and stuff. And so it might happen that you have to deal with your siblings. Now, because uh, Saturn has been beginning its transit in the fourth house, I'm thinking that there may be more responsibilities associated with home life. And as I said, it might relate to having to take care of parents. It might be like your family home that you're having to, you know, renovate and protect that investment. Something along those lines when Saturn is making its transit in the fourth house where you have to get more serious about your living situation. It could be your own house as an adult that you're having to do renovations or maybe you're even building a house and you might even be building it yourself. But in any case, now that it's retrograding, you're revisiting sibling issues, you're revisiting neighborhood issues, if you have any, you know, or neighbors, if you have any kind of conflicts with your neighbors or things that you need to iron out. It could have to do with some kind of a writing project that you undertook and you're doing editing for it or some additional material is needed or if you're taking some kind of courses and you have to take extra courses or review some educational material. That's what this retrograde back into the third house may entail. So just letting you know about that. So I hope you enjoyed your June 2015 forecast, Virgo. And stay tuned. I'm planning on doing a tarot spread for your sign. And that's coming up sometime in May. Take care, Virgo. Bye.